There we go. Can I be okay. heard? Oh, yes, I can. Yay. Um, was that Matthew? Yes. All right, great. So I think on the call we have Tiffany, Angie, Donna, Vesa, Rob, Matthew, and myself, Dries, and then um, Holly, and I'm not sure who else of the association staff. Um, but we're still missing Jeff, Denise, and Addie right now. But uh, we have quorum, so we're going to get started. Um, some of these people will um, most likely join us uh, a little bit later into this call. Um, so today's board meeting, um, I think it's probably fairly short. We have uh, quite a few things to talk about in the executive session. Um, so for the open session, we're going to talk about um, you know, Q&A from Holly on, on the operations. We're going to do reports from the board committees. And then we're going to get an update from the working groups. So with that, I want to give the floor to Holly. Okay. Well, <clears throat> uh, this month we're covering uh, we're covering May uh, in our report, and there is certainly lots to say, lots going on, especially because I think one of the highlights is that you know we had a DrupalCon, so that happened. <coughs> Uh, but just want to share that we'll get more details uh, about the financials and all the other uh, metrics around the DrupalCon in next month's board meeting. So that's coming, um, along with our learnings. But uh, a couple other highlights to point out um, for folks. Uh, I don't know if it's a highlight for anyone else, but I was really excited that we got two-factor authentication on Drupal.org, because I'm a nerd. And uh, I'm really excited to see that happen. Uh, it's rolled out right now for users with elevated privileges, and you know we'll roll that out more broadly over time, but just a huge thanks to Ben Jevons and Greg Oles and Michael Hess and the folks on the security team for making that happen on Drupal.org. That's a big win, uh, big one for us. Um, and the other big thing on Drupal.org is that we're beginning to work on the content strategy um, so that the work of developing the strategy is complete and um, we're excited to start rolling that out because it should make Drupal.org easier to navigate for our key personas, especially folks making from learner to skilled. Um, and it also gives um, the folks who are, you know, especially our volunteers who are uh, managing various aspects of star.drupal.org um, more control over permissioning and flexibility with the content in their areas. So we're excited to give folks better tools there. Um, and the first section that we're going to roll out with the new content strategy in place is why Drupal. And uh, I just want to say thank you to the community members out there who've been contributing content for, for that section. Um, and, you know, excited to see that roll out. So lots going on at Drupal.org. Another big win in the month of May was the D8 Accelerate campaign. Um, we're up to $213,500. So we have $36,500 to go. So much closer than we were just a couple months ago. But May was a big month. We raised $55,000, which was huge. Um, and part of that was due to uh, DrupalCon. So we had you know, uh, folks who were donating, uh, rounding up their purchase price at the Drupal store and donating that way. And folks uh, donated at the trivia night. Um, but uh, we also had the, the big donation from Time, which was great to announce. Um, and then a number of other donations, Catalyst IT donated $8,000 in May, um, and then a number of projects and companies donated $1,000 each, um, including um, Donna did a great job wrangling the Open Source Developers Conference of Australia, um, made a donation, and then SiteGround and FigLeaf and Duo Consulting all made $1,000 donations as well. So that was a lot of momentum in the month of May, um, and we will, uh, you know, continue to ramp that up, but just a reminder to the board members, if you have asks out, now's a good time to follow up because we're uh, just a few months away now from our September goal for that um, campaign. And we're close, we're so close. Um, one other announcement to make that I'll put under the highlights is uh, the licensing working group met in the month of May and um, created a number of documents to outline how we are uh, to update the licensing policies. Um, so just a, a heads up that there's some changes coming and they'll be posting in the licensing queue uh, what some of those changes will be. 
Um, but uh, Angie wanted me to specifically mention to folks that uh, one of the biggest shifts that's, that's most significant and should make the lives of our developers significantly easier is that um, the licensing working group is recommending that we drop the GPL requirement for, uh, for assets on Drupal.org. So images and fonts and, and those kinds of um, assets in your code base uh, will not have to be GPL licensed. Gonna stop there. Any questions about any of those updates? Okay. Um, and then, as I, I mentioned in the packet, you know, the, the low light for us as an organization just continues to be revenue, which is pacing below budget, um, and that's just an issue we've you know continued to deal with. Um, some of that is driven by I think just environmental factors. Um, you know, where we are in the re release cycle for Drupal 8, et cetera. Um, and some of it is just not being able to perform to plan for a variety of other reasons. Um, so that continues to be an issue for us. But the thing that I want to stress is that uh, while we're not hitting budget, um, revenue is actually still growing relative to 2014. So um, the good news is that we do continue to grow. It's just not quite as fast as we had hoped for. And, you know, we'll talk uh, more financial numbers during our financials review in the executive session. So that is that. Is there anything covered that I didn't talk about that you guys want to ask questions about? Or No questions? All right, back to me, I guess. <laughs> All right, uh, reports from the board committees. Um, I believe we said we would just put them in the packet and then people can read them if there is specific questions mm -hmm. um, on the committees. So got you guys, all, uh, yeah, we got them all, all into the packet, Therese. Right. Um, one, one question. Um, no, it's okay. I answered it already in my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if there's no questions, I think we can um, move along to the um, updates from the working groups. Great. Let me just point out also, Samir says he's here. And Samir, I have unmuted you, so you should be good to go if you need. Um, let's see. I do not see George. Here's, oh, hey, here's Jeff Walpole. Hang on one second. Unmuting Jeff Walpole. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Hey, Jeff. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, that was a chore. Hey, Jeff. Good morning. Sorry, everyone. I'm remote. Um, hey, there's no passcode for uh, the U.S. dial-in number, so you actually have to install the app in order to get on. I will look into that. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Jeff. All right. So uh, I'll be delivering the working group update uh, this uh, quarter, just based on uh, availability of uh, chairs and those who are involved. So, um, and also it's it's going to be a pretty quick one, so that'll be part of it as well. So uh, just a quick reminder of everyone that's on the working group. A uh, big thank you to all the community members who jumped in and who've been working with us. Uh, and this is a three Drupal.org working groups that we're specifically referring to. Uh, last quarter, the big thing from last quarter, you know, we, we keep mentioning DrupalCon Los Angeles. Uh, that was really big for the uh, working groups as well. We did an all working groups meeting on the Monday of that uh, DrupalCon week. Um, all of the working groups had uh, representation with the exception of Doc's working group, but we were able to catch up with Joe Schindler from the Doc's working group uh, throughout the week at, at the con. And so he was able to get caught up on a lot of the processes that we had talked through uh, during that time, which was very nice. Um, we walked through what our ideal process would be, both from um, communicating between the groups and also what the prioritization process looks like, because uh, previously only the software working group had really been heavily involved in that. Um, and we started talking about how we would be mapping the prioritization process uh, to the 
Drupal Association goals as they've been set by the board. So um, that, that was all received very positively um, and we're beginning that work. So the other thing that uh, was a big part of DrupalCon Los Angeles were the numerous presentations, both from working group members and from staff that pointed back to a lot of the things that we have planned in the uh, um, Drupal.org roadmap. Uh, we got a, a whole bunch of um, just amazing feedback. Uh, it was a great opportunity. There was a ton of uh, interest and excitement around the content strategy and the proposed model there. Uh, lots of feedback uh, on issue workspaces and including some uh, really positive um, contributions from, from folks who, who helped us get back past a couple of the, the stickier problems. That we were trying to do. Um, the core conversations uh, track, one of the things that uh, I noticed as I was going back through and listening to a lot of the core conversations is uh, there was a lot of overlap in some of the discussions and uh, there was also a lot of excitement in that track that kind of related back to the Drupal.org stuff. So I think um, overall there was um, a ton of great information, information sharing and uh, getting a lot of people on the same page. Um, quick charter update. update. <laughs> the uh, executive committee is finalizing uh, the, the version of the Drupal.org uh, working group charters that will be brought to the board for approval. That should probably be ready by the next board meeting um, uh, uh, based on the kind of where they're at and the, the last conversations that I saw. A uh, uh, couple of reminders of what's going to be included in that. Uh, a little bit more consistent language between the three charters so that they're all working from a similar place. Um, an expansion of the membership. So there's uh, an expectation that every working group will have between three and four, com uh, three and five community members, uh, and we're shooting for five for every working group. Um, we're also talking about kind of formalizing the process for public meetings with our advisors, uh, similar to what the infrastructure team meetings look like right now, where it's a it's a public meeting, an opportunity for people to jump in and get involved. Um, and I was really excited to see this uh, a, a racy matrix that is kind of pulling together who's responsible for what areas, um, you know being able to identify who's responsible versus who's accountable versus who's consulted versus uh, who's informed. And I, I think that's gonna be uh, a nice addition for us to have linked off of the charters. I keep trying to change the slides from my computer and that's not gonna work. Not gonna work. Yeah. Um, so quick updates from each of the chairs and I, I took these notes just so that uh, um, I could speak for them since they weren't gonna be able to, to make it here today. Uh, from the content working group, um, the high level findings and recommendations of the content strategy were presented and there's now a whole set of meta issues that you can track that work and where that's going. Um, uh, George pointed out that the RFP for the development and design, the development of a design system uh, has been largely completed, but we're putting it on hold uh, based on some uh, budget conversations that we're having right now. The, the reality is we may not uh, actually have the, the budget to cover um, doing that project at this time. So we're gonna be putting it off most likely. Uh, that said, we can still start with implementing much of the, the content model. Um, and it particularly, uh, Holly had mentioned this, starting with the wide Drupal section for evaluators um, and, and getting a little bit better uh, as well right now at coordinating our conversations with Drupal.com uh, so that we can share content between those two sites and making sure that the, the content is aligned. Um, lastly, uh, George is uh, planning to put out a blog post in the very near future that's going to be looking for another one to two community members to join the group. For the infrastructure working group, uh, the major things here is um, Narayan is, is now officially the chair since the last board meeting. Um, so he's been kind of doing a little work on uh, Kind of trying to streamline some um, cooperation between volunteers and staff, uh, trying to work to find a few uh, new members that can join that particular working group because we were down to one community member plus uh, two staff members. And so we really want to expand that out again. And I believe by the time, actually probably between now and the next board meeting, we'll be sending out an email to the board with some uh, recommendations for who we feel could be added to uh, the infrastructure working group. Um, they're also doing a lot of work right now with our staff in terms of uh, kind of rebuilding some integration points with the OSL to reduce our dependencies on the services that have been causing some reliability issues of late. Uh, we've had a kind of a, a, a spate of um, 
recent outages that are in some cases not at all the, the, the fault of the open source lab, but in many cases it's because of systems that aren't terribly redundant and there's ways for us to, to improve upon that. Uh, lastly, the software working group. Uh, Tatiana gave us some notes. Uh, in the last quarter, uh, there was a lot of reviewing and providing feedback on the content strategy deliverables. Um, there was also uh, a lot of feedback on planning the all working groups meeting. And I really wanted to thank uh, Angie and David and Kathy because I, I think uh, perhaps more than some of the other groups, they were really instrumental in helping us put together some of that, uh, um, that schedule and that agenda that we used for the all working groups meeting. Um, in addition, uh, we've started brainstorming some possible new members uh, while waiting for those charter updates to be finalized. And I think that group would also be looking for um, probably two, but there have been discussions about how large should the advisory role of the soft working group be. And so it, it could potentially be a little bit bigger than that as well. Um, some quick updates on, on the strategic roadmap. Uh, the account creation and login experience is largely done. Uh, so that will be falling off the list after the next uh, quarterly prioritization with the working groups. Uh, organization and user profile improvements. Uh, we're hoping, the plan had actually been to, uh, to uh, get organization credits onto org profiles in the, the last two week sprint. Unfortunately, uh, we had to shift around some resources due to some uh, things that came up with Drupal CI that gave us an opportunity to speed that up. Uh, but the hope is in the next uh, the next iteration that we're doing, uh, we hope to have organization credits uh, displaying on, on organization profiles and user credits showing on user profiles. Uh, Drupal events continues to be uh, a focus for us uh, improving, uh, creating that multi-con site that allows us to run all the Drupal cons from one site. Uh, content strategy and design, I've talked quite a bit about that as a, the infrastructure stabilization and independence. On the Drupal CI front, uh, just a, a quick update there. Um, we had members of staff meet with uh, core maintainers last week and uh, do a basic demo of the MVP that was received very well. We've got uh, basically one or two blockers to completely switching over, but we feel really confident in launching and doing dual testing uh, for the next couple of weeks. And while I'm not 100% sure it's gonna happen today, uh, we were actually talking about possibly deploying some of the pieces on Drupal.org as early as today. Uh, so core maintainers and, and core would start getting daily tests on both systems simultaneously, which is really exciting. It took a long time to get to that space. Uh, lots of volunteer contribution, but this this last few weeks of push from staff has has made a um, a big difference, and they've come up with some good workarounds for some things that were kind of long-standing issues to get past. And so, um, I hope uh, Angie doesn't mind me speaking for the core maintainers whenever I say they seem pretty stoked about the uh, uh, the quality of uh, of what we were able to to, to demo uh, last week. Yep, and um, people were super excited, and they just wanted to know when can we see it. <laughs> so, so maybe today. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's a nice example of wow. getting accelerate funds, right? Uh, yeah, it's a good example of That's right. accelerate funds getting a uh, a sprint here at the offices, and then also uh, funding the work of great volunteers who are helping um, move that particular project along very quickly. So, um, yeah, excellent. Um, the other thing that's getting really close to a launch and that I, I'll throw out a quick mention to is localize.drupal.org. Uh, we, we have just a, a couple of small issues that are remaining open right now, and we'll be able to switch over to the upgraded version that's running on D7, removing that Drupal 8 blocker as well, and that's been very exciting. Uh, the remaining uh, items on the list are still on the list, and they, uh, they'll be uh, um, kind of approached as we, as we go through. However, that does bring me to next steps, and I keep hitting the wrong keyboard. Um, we are working with all the working groups in June and July to uh, nail down the objectives that are a part of the prioritization process. And then we're going to be doing prioritization meetings uh, last week of June, uh, first couple weeks of July, where we, we actually get a new list uh, that we can work from. Uh, we're really working to make the initiatives a little bit more um, specific so that it's easier for us to say when a particular initiative is done. Uh, that'll make it a little bit, uh, make it a little bit easier for communication as well. Um, but that's, that work is, is slotted right now with the working groups for the July timeframe. 
Uh, and what that will mean is we'll be doing quarterly updates to the initiatives list and we'll be aligning the working group updates with the quarterly updates of how the prioritization um, has been affected by that, that process. So that's a, kind of a, a bit of a change and I think it's gonna make a, the quality of the updates that we're able to provide the board a, a little bit better. But um, I do wanna end on a, a quick question, which would be, are there anything, any other things that you would like to see in the quarterly updates from the working groups? that you're not seeing right now, um, and anything that you would recommend to, to make this process better. I thought that was about the right, right amount of detail. Sorry about that, Trees, unmuting you. There you go. No worries. <laughs> The only other thing that might be cool is, um, especially since this happens at a public board meeting, is just like to talk a bit more about the wins and kind of some screenshots and stuff. But I think actually the board packet has a lot of that information. But like if there's something really awesome, like when Drupal CI launches, which will happen sometime between this update and the next update, maybe just a couple screenshots to show it in action just so people get an idea of what they're paying for, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. It also gives us an opportunity to, to um, add aboard the team, you know. Excellent. I'll get that. One idea that I had was to, you know, as we get better and better at these, which we are, you know, maybe another the next step could be to present some of the information more in a, in a roadmap format, mm -hmm. with, you know, timeline, you know, with like time as well, like here's... I don't know, here's what we're planning to do in the next three months and then the next three months after kind of thing. I don't know, I think it could help put things in perspective as well. Definitely, I, I can see uh, adding, adding that as well. Any other bits of feedback? Going once, <laughs> going twice. You can always email. <laughs> nope. And I always say sold to Ryan because Ryan is most often the one on our team wearing a funny hat. Ah. That's a good call. He heard his, he heard his he, name. He just popped up, he popped like up a out of his dog. cube and he's wearing a funny hat. So once again, sold to the man in the funny hat. Um, all right. Thanks, Josh. It was great. Good to see all these things moving. Awesome. All right. Is there any other questions in general? If not, I think we can adjourn and move into the executive session. Anything else? Sounds good. All righty. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for attending. Hey, uh, uh, Holly, just a quick logistical note from Jeff. Um, I'm transferring. I'm trying to get in cab right now. Getting on that other conference call is going to be really hard. I'm going to be late. I'm going to just be there maybe. Okay, I'm going to look into the uh, invite there, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, this one's my fault. I'm literally... Okay, thanks. thanks.